recording. All right, so I've got, yeah, recording now on OBS. I can minimize this. George, you want to walk us through what we're doing today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's, it's been, been a while, while since we did, did a video, video on, on the channel. channel. And, um, but, we've but we've also been, been working pretty hard on Universal, Universal Blue, Blue stuff. stuff. So, so I, I figured, figured I'd do two birds with one stone and, and just make a video about what we're making. making. And, and uh, Marco, Marco, we're going to do, gonna it, do live. it live. And then hopefully at the end, we're going to have what I call Blue Fin Developer Experience Edition. All right, so Universal Blue, we have face images, video images, and then we make that as kind of like a toolkit for you, right? And then you make your own image with like your really opinionated stuff, right? Because we want to keep the main images as Vanilla as possible. Give you the, the the purest stock, right? You want the best stock. The Fedora give you a little bit of sprinkles, and you don't want to. You don't want someone else making your decisions, right? So we kind of leave those alone, um, except for hardware enablement, that OBS loopback thing, which, you know, that's that's the kind of stuff that we want to do. Um, but then, uh, you have your downstream, what I call downstream images, which is your image based on one of those. It's like what you want your perfect thing to be. And for me, that was Bluefin, which is, can you show the browser just to show the repo? Yeah, yeah, pull it up now. Yeah. Uh, and those of you who don't know um, Marco and I's history, uh, we, we both worked at Canonical for like a really long time uh, on Ubuntu uh, related stuff. Uh, uh, so for me, no, just Bluefin normal. In oh, the, no, that in the yeah, repo. yeah, yeah, Bluefin here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just explaining uh, what Bluefin is for people. Yeah, but half the people in this room already know that, though. Uh, presumably yeah but we're putting this on youtube so uh they'll figure it out they got google yeah <laughs> uh so scroll down here a little bit yeah i just want you to show that part right so this is my strongly opinionated universal blue image that kind of matches our personality which is i like the ubuntu style and all that stuff and that's kind of it was also like the first thing that i made when it was just like a crappy script on github right um but in order to do this properly, you, we had to do, you had to make a thing, which is our base images in order to enable people to do this. And my hope is, is that people go out and they see something like this that's kind of very opinionated, right? It's like my opinion of what a good desktop should be. And then say, you know what? I also have this same toolkit. I'm gonna make the best tiling window manager thing or whatever it is you're into, right? Uh, but no one's really d done this before. So part of the reason I'm also doing this is to like figure out how to do that. So when people ask me, I want a blue fin, but for my thing, um, you know, we can like help them out. So now since the toolkit's basically in like maintenance mode right now, uh, cause 38 is done and we're just chilling for a while. Uh, I kind of wanted to take a spin here. So my problem is, is that this is the perfect desktop. However, I also have work machines that need developer stuff. Um, so my VS code and all of that, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, so I wanted a developer experience. This would be a different image because I have, like I have a two in one here that I'm watching the basketball game in and that has a small drive. It doesn't need VS code and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I also wanted the image uh, for a few reasons. A, a lot of the tools that we use are kind of low level, right? Like you'll see here, vert manager, uh, all the libvert stuff, uh, lexc, lexd, and all of that thing. So I kind of knew that if we wanted to do this, it has to be a separate image. So at that point, why not just go for it, right? Um, so I was thinking, just put VS Code directly on the image. The flat pack of, of VS Code is not maintained very well right now. Uh, and this will give us uh, you know, the more official thing. And then we'll put it on the image because a lot of people still haven't gotten used to that container dev VS Code workflow with dev containers or whatever. So fine, we'll put it on the image. Who cares? Like, like. That's our use case, so let's use it. Uh, and then that week, Intel um, announced a cool new mono font. And I was like, well, wow, if I'm going to make the world's awesomest thing, I want to be able to put custom fonts in it. And that's what we're going to figure out tonight. Um, and then, right, oh, well, I might as well get all my hashes. Like Terraform should be on there and all my Kubernetes tools and all of that kind of stuff. I want DevBox, DevPod, all that stuff. Uh, so I made this here in my personal repo, which is I cloned it and then set this up, which took me about an hour. But what I really want is to go back, take all of these changes that I've made and then actually build this out of the Bluefin repo so that 
we have Bluefin, Bluefin DX, Bluefin NVIDIA, and Bluefin NVIDIA DX. Machines that you want to be normal desktops, don't have the DX, right? It's dash, add a dash DX to the, your image is what gets you the developer thing, because I think that's a clever thing that we can all remember, right? So if it's Marco Cepi dash custom image dash DX, okay, that's probably the developer experience. Of course, what I really want is in the machine, you go into about GNOME or whatever, and you click a button to turn on developer mode, and it transparently switches images, and you don't even have to care. Wouldn't that be awesome? So to surmise real quickly, currently Bluefin has a Bluefin <laughs> and a Bluefin NVIDIA. Yep. And that's yep. like your opinion on how to get like a really similar experience which you get at Ubuntu, but using Fedora, Silver Blue, and Ublue. We're going right. to make a sub-flavor of Bluefin for Bluefin DX, which is... Bluefin and all that Ubuntu-esque experience on Fedora Silver Blue, but with a lot of developer tools out of the box, which you had right. highlighted very nicely, I think, here, actually. It's like, here's the focus areas. Here's what you could expect. The nice thing about yeah. this, I think the thing you highlighted earlier, is that at the end of the day, if you like 90% of the stuff that George has done in the developer experience image, you can take his Bluefin DX and then take it to 10% that you need and make your own flavor distro that's immutable and has all those nice properties you get from like fresh updates and a build cycle without having to do it all by hand or yeah you know do local scripts for it in a repeatable fashion so you just reminded me of something i want to make sure we get on tape on tape oh, um uh, said, scroll down oh yeah, yeah. I, le I learned this actually from a really smart a bunch of smart engineers actually do this is uh write down what the readme would look like before you have anything like what would it look like Mm -hmm. And you're like, I don't know, should it be a spec? Like, you know how people talk about specs and all that stuff? For for me, I just like to be like, if I were wanting to use this project and I read the README and I liked it, what would it read like? And then I just started adding to it. I like it. Yeah. Well, I didn't yeah, know what yeah. you were talking about. And then I see this. It's like, oh, I have a pretty good idea. Oh, okay. Doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And thankfully, then the, if... all, almost all of this. So like to, to recycle again, you've created a fork of Bluefin called Bluefin yep. DX. You've and modified the, the container, container file. File. Yep, let's And then let's the take container file yeah. and then the packages. No packages nope. JSON. Nope, because what I did is I didn't know how packages JSON interacted oh, yeah. with editing this. Easy enough. So I just cut it out entirely. Oh, here, here you go. Yeah, so you added lines. a bunch of lines to install code, Lex D, Lex C, yep. a bunch yep. of other tools. And then I don't know why my GitHub enhanced to this. But, and then you copied a bunch of binaries from existing things. So like Flux, Helm. Co yep. MC. So you've done all this work already. The plan now is how do we incorporate this into this existing container file so that we can build both mm -hmm. the base Bluefin variant and as well the DX flavor, which is just this plus others. And so yeah. Big Pod mentioned what we talked about using. What we're going to try to do is using multi-stage builds yeah. in Podman for this, and then target each stage selectively during the build process so that we can have one container file with all the different flavors and build them independently. So Big Pod mentioned that you can, I didn't know this, this is why I'm excited to do this stream is, uh, and I'm gonna be learning along the way actually, is it previously, at least when I used things like Docker in the past, when you had a multi-stage build, you just, it built, and when the very last thing that it built, that was it. You couldn't really target an intermediate stage. But Big Pod pointed some links to where in Podman you can do that. So that's what we're going to try today, I guess, is to take the mods you have, bake them in here. Yeah, I agree. I didn't know that. I feel like it should have always been there from the start. Uh, and I'm super excited to try it out and kind of see if we can get it to work into Bluefin. Because I feel like that might be helpful for a lot of the people who are trying to build these multi-flavored stages without creating a large swath of container files. And potentially even like container file toolbox might I don't know. I'm not, I'm not getting into that. That's too much. That's a bridge afar. But uh, at least for today, we'll get a uh, DX baked in. So I'm, we're going to start from there. George is getting a water refill, but I'm going to switch over to VS Code. Uh, I've opened up the repo locally. I think I have a latest version. Let me just double check. Oh, hey, I also wanted to say uh, Big Pod is the one that figured all of this out. Yep. I and he actually streams a lot of his content. Big Pod, if you would paste your link to your YouTube channel in chat so people can check it out. He streams uh, here as well. So if you want more of that universal blue goodness. And he's here today to help save me from all the mistakes I'm going to make along the way. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I'm looking at our. Con I've got the repo pull down. I get fetch. Mm -hmm. origin. Yeah, I got the latest code from Bluefin locally. Uh, I got the container file opened. Heck yeah. YouTube.com slash big pod. Great place to find it. Um, I'm I'm literally blanking on how to build multi stages, multi stage builds. So we're going to go Google that first. Uh, there's yep. a header yep. we need to do. I don't know if we have to define. Well, I guess we already defined this as a builder. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something we got to do. Let me go see the Podman instructions for it. Because I know in like Docker, you get to like set a build kit flag and a bunch of other stuff. So we'll take a quick Does swing he... through here. I'm just going to go with T9 Clint. I subbed. Well, Shout out. I've already been here, I guess. Yes, you have. Oh, yeah. You know what? Here. I unsubscribed earlier Hello, just so everybody. I can press this My button. My name is Bigfoot. There we go. All right. So I was literally here earlier today for a different unrelated image, but a uh, reason. But the dash target is the thing that BigPod pointed out is that you can set the target build stage to build. Uh, so when building a container file with multiple stages, target can be used to specify an intermediate build stage by name as the final stage for the building image. Commands after the target stage are skipped. This is super cool. I don't know if this exists in Docker or not, but the fact that it's here, I'm very excited about. Um, mm, as far as I know, it does. It does exist in Docker? I could Google it, but I don't have yes. time for that. Yeah. Google on your own. Because what we want to do is call this a separate like flavor like we do with Kinoite or whatever, right? Yeah, so... Because what's confusing to me is I don't understand... What I want is kind of separate container files for each, right? Because for the yeah. DX ones, we are going to have to make separate. Like, I don't understand where changes for each file go, I guess is my. Okay, cool. So this is as, as, it is as easy as I remember it being. So let's go to VS Code. So we've already set up this very first from as a stage. The stage is called Builder. I'm going to replace... I don't think we do any more froms, do we? No. I'm going to replace this as builder. I'm just going to call this bluefin. Cuz this is the this is the bluefin base, so to speak. And then what I'm going to mm. do is copy this line. Uh, I'm going to go down here. And we're going to say from I think we just say from base, yeah. Yeah, from base as, so we're gonna say from Bluefin, not base, as Bluefin DX. So now we've got two stages. We have a Bluefin stage here in the file, and we've got a named Bluefin DX stage. And then I'm literally- I for the see, first I start, see. For the first whack at this. Uh, I think this should copy over all the NVIDIA stuff as well. But I think it's gonna be called Bluefin yes. DX NVIDIA, which I think is what you wanted for a name, right? Bluefin dash DX. Ooh, dash would it be or NVIDIA? Or to, what do you oh, want to be no. called, I guess? What's the question? What's, what do you want it to be called? Oh, wait. Oh, we'll because they later. both you know make what? sense. You, because they you, both make sense. You ponder that for a little bit. We're going to come back to you in like 20 minutes. I'm going to need an answer from you. Oh, there is no right answer. <laughs> well, we can NVIDIA at the end? NVIDIA at the end. All right. Well, we'll all right. default to Brian here. I'm going to copy all the stuff you had in your... Um, oh, there's a the technical stuff. reason. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the scripts append it to the container name, so NVIDIA has to be at the end. It, yeah, it, it does today, but it, we can we can change. We write the CI things. So. We should, yeah, we should fix that, but... Uh, I don't think we yeah, can fix we it. I think be... it's fine. I think it being at the end is fine, because that's the NVIDIA flavor of the DX. Image. Change is bad. Brian wins. Yeah, yeah. Changes back to this is good. The less we have to muck around in the CI file, the better. Yes. Yes. So, also that. Go ahead. Yeah. Also that. Le less change is better. Yeah. A hundred percent. So I've grabbed the changes that you had here. So everything uh, after the from line. So I'll show you here in the Chrome window real quickly. So in Chrome, I went to this page here. Uh, everything from here above is boilerplate. It's we've already okay. had all we have all the arguments already set. 
the base image name, the image flavor, etc. cetera. Uh, then we've got the from line and then I copied everything afterwards. So all these pieces here copied forward. Um, <clears throat> I put that in the VS code, which is over here. So I'm not going to change anything here. There's yep. probably, there's probably going to be people with lots of opinions about the number of run lines we have. Those yeah. are all optimizations for the future. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And with our, there's RPM OS tree and, and stuff, it gets really complicated in here. So like, we're still figuring that out as a community. Um, mm -hmm. But that's what we're rolling with right now. Yeah, so I'm going to leave these instructions as is. This this has worked in your DX repo already. And there's nothing for me to really do to change it. I'm going right. to save it. And now the proverbial hard part starts. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I guess we could probably move things like kind and stuff over in the future. No. Oh, so sorry. I've I've thought of it. No, 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 no. Sorry, that that didn't mean I didn't mean that to come off that way. <laughs> like, I was like, no, that no. Is, um, what I it's meant to say base. is we're always you always that is an in, Yeah, it's a, it's an intentional design decision because, <laughs> um, in my head, hypothetically, these are. You know, these are used at school labs and stuff, and the idea yeah. of every kid having Kubernetes as a dad. I'm making dad Linux, so, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, a minute. So yeah. the next thing that we need to change is the GitHub action. So we can test this locally. Like, I can run. Uh-oh. I found myself into a snafu. Podman build dot. I don't have Podman. Um, oh, no. I know. Are I'm not, I'm not on a Fedora machine. I, I only boot my Fedora Which... machine up. I, which you version of Ubuntu are you on? I'm on, a, I'm on an ancient version, I think. Yeah, oh. do not. Oh, 2004. That's not. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess that's... No, you won't. You won't get it. I don't have Pod Man. Screw, screw this. Let me, let me go to a real machine. I think if you, I think if you Docker pulled, if you Docker built, I think that would work also. Yeah, oh, I know, Docker but Docker should work as well. I, yeah, yeah. I don't know what version of Docker I have. It's probably super old because I don't use. Let's let's not explore version. in this part of the stack. Let's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're web ops yeah, tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I've got I've got a real machine with a real Fedora that I can connect to just real quickly. Give me just a hot second. It's not the one I think it is. Do you? Is it? It's it is probably the one. It's the one I use for Yaffe Dev. Oh. Thought it was the other one. Whatever. What? No. It's a it's a virtual machine. Marco uh, stood up our first ARM builder thanks to Equinix Metal, donated an 80 core ARM machine uh, to the project for us to use for a while. It's, it was. It's absurd. Good. It is absurd. Like, oh, you each think I was build is, it on that? Uh, yeah, I thought, oh. I was like, oh, are you surprised <laughs> going to show us making an ARM image? No, that's we'll get there. Yeah. Once. We we'll get do there. An we'll ARM, get we can do an ARM build stream, though, in the future. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. So let's do this. Let's um, let's whack that into GitHub, and then from then on, we'll only talk when the builders are going. Yeah, that let way me, I've got a branch called DX, that. so let me get. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just commit this. We're gonna have to make some changes to the CI as well, but I wanted to make sure this worked first. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's do feature. Oh yeah, man. Uh. Someone saying super keen for Fedora Silver Blue on arm. Yeah, I want I want that ThinkPad. <laughs> uh, okay, I've got a I've got a machine running. So let me go ahead and connect to it, and I'll switch over the VS Code, and I'll pull this stuff down on that instead. Oh yeah, Acronex Metal is amazing. Yeah, Ed Ed's actually in the channel now. He's hanging out with us. I talked to him today. Uh, we're just trying to get him some hardware so he can actually start running a Universal Blue image and. Look, Ed knows all the the cool server folks, and getting them excited about Universal Blue is like an explicit goal in my life now. Uh, I think there will be a Universal Blue Asahi because there will be a Fedora Asahi. Yeah, and I'm I'm especially yeah. in favor of things like small socs like raspberry pis and pine boards and stuff yeah, having it's gonna a, be so cool a U blue like fedora silver blue experience on there but really yeah. reliable is one that i'm super pumped for 
All right, I'm just I'm connecting to the host machine. Well, I thought we were just going to skip the local part. Just whack it into GitHub, see if it builds. Uh, it, well, I, it will, but it'll be called wrong because we're not targeting. I got to see if the, I guess we'll do that one uh, to boot up is that okay. the workflow right now for our build, this is the thing with the modifies. We're using an action down here, build a build V2. I don't know if this has a target flag. So we got to go figure that out, which we can do right now while I wait for this to boot up. So we'll head over to the internet, take a look at the documentation for this action. Oh, that's not promising. The word target only comes up once, and that's not what I wanted. Um, now this is what I, I don't. This is don't worry, Clint. I'm not a dev either. I'm just a just a normal dude. So this ah oh interesting. I don't know. If oh, we just have this. to assemble it by hand and then put them both in there. Uh, build a uh, so Podman build has the flag for target, but I don't know if Builda does. Isn't Podman build just like pass off stuff to Builda? Does it? I don't know. I don't pretty sure they designed it that way on purpose. Wasn't that the thing? Brian would know. I'll wait for someone in chat to like chime in yeah. someone knowledgeable. Let's see oh this is not the it's the readme. Uh, I guess it doesn't quite. I think it uses the same underlying libraries. As okay, so far as build I know. A build. Let's see what flags this has. Oh, platforms, annotations, arch, build context. I saw build arg. Wait. Yeah, we, oh, we no. pass in build arg yeah, already, yeah. but we need to find. Okay. You can reference the build context in all commands that accept it. Here's how it might look. From Good night, Brian. Name. Thanks for stopping by. Copy from name, run from mountain name. So what is this? Oh, that's just a build context. Okay, cache. Caching to C target. C target. Oh, okay. It does support target flag. So build and supports the target flag. Okay. Can I pass in more parameters to this through here? Uh, let's see. I saw a potential extra args. Feel free to <laughs> chime in if you've got the. Yeah, so I think we can use idea. the extra args to pass in the target flag for each. All right, so let's try that then. We'll add it to the extra args. Should I, I post on Mastodon that we're doing this? I think I'm going to do that. What? What do you? Do? Uh, yeah. If people can watch me suffer. Next time. We'll do it next time. Okay. <laughs> it's... No pressure. Hug ops. Hug ops. <laughs> uh, so with... Because this sounds like the most convoluted part. It's all downhill from here, right? This is literally the problem, as I understand it. Yeah, how to get this to work in CI. Yeah, Extra this is the part I... The yeah. build a bud. Offering is always better done in public. Do not use quotes. All right. Yeah, I'm very accustomed to suffering in public, so... It's new line delimited. So we're going to do target equals matrix dot target. And we got to set this as a matrix variable. Why didn't that work? What's going on here? Context access might be invalid. Oh, okay. I don't have a target in here yet. So up here at the very top, we've got main and NVIDIA. Those are the image flavors. Then for each, we need a target. Target. Bluefin. Oh, no quotes. Bluefin and then 
bluefin dx so these will be the names in the container file here we got bluefin bluefin dx so we can pass those in we can also use these as the image name which is set to image name which is set where I think that's passed in. Let's see. Ah, oh, yeah, it's set in here. Okay. So if it's main, huh? Hmm. What's image base name? Bluefin. I think I'm gonna remove this image base name in favor of the target. So maybe I call this base name. Base name. This is now this becomes matrix.target, oh, base name, base name. That line always confused me, man. When I needed to edit it, when I clone it to be something else. Yeah, this may actually help to streamline this a bit more. And then otherwise it's gonna be matrix base name dash image flavor. So it'll be mm -hmm. bluefin dash NVIDIA, bluefin dash DX dash NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. And then anywhere we reference this image, image base name variable, just those two places. What I like about this too is like every time you make a fork, you have to go in here and change the names and stuff in like five different places. If it yeah, was but just if you change them out. here, and like if you only have one, you can just right. remove this and you get one base name basically. Hopefully that makes it clear. We should really document this in a follow up yeah on the website about like you've just forked your first repo what do you change yeah i, I just want to fill in this use case because i'm also going to use this video to document all our ideas um is this kind of deals with the uh you're the it dad or mom in your household right but you want all the stuff so it's a, it, I, I want it to be a generic pattern more than a Bluefin specific thing. Do you know right. what I mean? Right, so the, fast, the last like, thing we'll do here is pass the dash dash target to whatever the base name is. And as long as the base name aligns with the container file, that should work. And then everything else should just kind of go swimmingly, he said, confidently. All right, chat, odds on this working on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> don't even, don't, no, no one take those odds. That's That's awful. Yeah. Uh, do we do builds on push still? I can't remember. Uh, we no, we don't. Yeah. We, we do the merge. We do the merge queue. So just PRing it, we'll build it. Okay. Well, we should still see the matrix run. All right. Well, let's let me push this up. Um, hey, Big Pod, do you mind uh, back background being the approver? <laughs> We'll do everything legit here and doing the reviews and all that stuff. Uh, oh, I, I, actually, M M Marco, when you do the pull request, open it in the web so they can see what Big Pod's doing and how we just, work. What just happened? Uh, goofed myself. One second. Uh, goofed hard. Okay, standing by. Yeah, give me. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, well, then we got a I little bit of a snag here. Line. Don't worry, I'm playing a game. Oh, okay. It's I'm the ultimate sin. So. Don't worry. It's the ultimate sin. Pick one or the other, or pay. I always do three things at once. <laughs> mm-hmm. happening oof
All right, let's see if this did what I wanted it to. That's close enough. Okay. Yeah. Git push origin DX. Let's go look at this in the web browser. Yeah, this is what I want. That, that. Yeah. Matrix base. And then down here we should have target. That's it. I am worried that this is going to break one thing in here because it does look for the base image name. Nope, that's fine. Mm -hmm. There's no image base name, right? No, it just needs an image name passed in. Okay, that should be fine. I think we're good to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's create a draft PR real quickly. Then we'll open this up in the browser. We'll switch over here. Let me just double check to make sure I didn't goof anything. No more image base name. We have a base name matrix now. That's set to the matrix base name. So we set the image name explicitly. And then if we're building an image flavor that's not main, we build here. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Set a target on the extra args. I, this is the thing that's going to break, if anything. This is the thing I don't know if it's going to work. Um, with Bluefin. But if that doesn't work, we just won't get an NVIDIA image, right? Uh, it'll All the images we built this DX image. That's the thing I'm worried about. Let's make this ready for review. And then it stuff's building now. Yep. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bluefin, Bluefin DX. Bluefin, Bluefin DX, 3738. Where's the NVIDIA? Oh, we don't do the NVIDIA ones on PR. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's watch. Let's watch Bluefin thirty eight and yep. Bluefin so DX. Just, just to narrate to the audience here is every time someone does a pull request on a U Blue repo, uh, we build, we build everything because uh, we can. Uh, yeah. That way, and then the rules we've set up, we can never merge unless all those things are working, which is how we. That's the protection mechanism that we're doing. So when we're making customizations, we're doing it right here and we're playing click ops. Uh, but not on a live system, right? Which is where I like to do my customization because I have multiple machines and they all run off the same image. That's when the advantages really start to shine, right? Or when you get a yep. new computer and you're like, it's perfect right out of the box. Yeah, it's set the titles and everything. It's all going to be uh, correct. Yeah. yeah. It should all be good. Okay, yeah. we'll let these things run. It's going to take a few minutes. Um, hmm. Now, uh, while that's going, we can uh, talk about, so I need to deliver different payloads just for this image. Would now be a good time to talk about that? Like user share fonts, I want to copy those files. Yeah, I want oh, to be that's able great. To... Yes, that's a great point. So let's take a we'll yeah, yeah. This run. I'll come back to the browser in a few minutes. You should be able to see it in the top right corner a little bit. We'll see the little status icon over here. Um, yeah. I'll put back the VS Code back on. Oh, it's just barely cut off. All right. Well, I'll keep an eye on it over here on my other screen. Yeah. Um, and anyone can see that if you go to the repo, you'll be able to watch it live. That's everything we're doing is open. So if you're not familiar with how GitHub works. So and build is approved, so can just will apply as soon as builds if it builds. Cool. I will hit the merge when ready button once these builds come out, just to make sure nothing gets broken. I'm, the thing I'm really looking forward to is that when we are at the build phase, the DX image gets all the extra commands. Uh, I'll tap the, the, the oh, windows. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah. My bad. Um, the thing I'm mostly looking forward yeah. to is thanks for approving the PR. I'm not gonna hit the merge when ready button yet. I'll wait for these tests to run a little bit. In the DX version, I expect to see a bunch of extra stuff at the very end, the explicit things that we have. And in the non-DX version, I don't wanna see anything outside. It should end with kind and that's it on the non-DX version. The DX version, we should see a bunch of stuff get added at the very end that's on the bottom of that file. So nice. that's what I'll wait for. And if that's there, we'll merge it and we'll let it run. And then I think we should be done at that point if it all works. Um, but to answer your question, like, what do I do to extend this? There's a few things you can do. I mm -hmm. wouldn't mess with the packages JSON right now. Um, 
the format's really set up for like all and then exclude and then 37s, 38s. It's not really set up for like uh, this thing that we just did. I think yeah, this is good yeah. for declaring like the base packages. And then mm -hmm. what you've done here, I think, is sufficient. Like add a run o RPM OS tree install, the things that yep. you want, and then OS tree container commit at the end. Yep. You can, and it's ugly, but it works. You could probably, like, there's an argument. I don't know. This is the thing I don't know about o RPM OS tree explicitly, as then all watching will learn. We're learning along the way. There's probably best practice. The best practice is either going to be an RPM OS tree install command per package to make all the layers. Or it's going to be all the packages installed in one go for RPMOS tree. I don't know what the best practice is for it. Someone will yeah. tell us. But um... nobody knows really. <laughs> I've been I've been doing sets of packages. Yeah. And it's been delivering pretty fast, but at best, one layer all packages is definitely yeah. not a good idea. Okay, then this is probably fine where they're grouped in like in like minds so just leave it just leave it out. <laughs> well i was gonna say the one thing we could do is just cut down on the number of docker layers but again I, that doesn't really matter either that doesn't much matter or not hyper -operating. yeah exactly yeah yeah we so don't. because at the end of the day when after you load it up it actually all gets squashed into a single image i had a feeling yeah. that was it happening at the end so matter. it's not an overlay fs like yeah. in docker and Podman, where that might 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 matter if you have Lots of layers, there could be performance issues. That's so, not the case here because it gets all squashed into a single <laughs> FS, no overlay, nothing like that. I know that there are people in like the cloud native world that are cringing at the number of sequential runs, but I thank you, Big Pop, for the explanation. Yes. I had a feeling that was the case as well, but I don't have the facts to back yeah. it up. So, George, to answer your question, you just keep doing this. You want to add a new package, add it here. Yeah. You want to copy yeah. a file, then um oh you know what? i realize we don't have to put this copy etsy here that's already been done up here we can get rid of this yeah as well. yeah so here's yeah. my question is more of an organizational best practice question in the tree structure yeah. of the repo itself i just created yeah. the x directory and then put an etsy in here and a user and all the other stuff in here so like a new folder etsy like if you wanted to you could create like a files directory and have one for dx and one for main yeah that'd be worse i think yeah i uh, yeah so I mean, Etsy and user are the main ones. These are the DX flavored files in here. You, I would just stick them in there. Just something to separate the two of them. And then yeah. you would have, instead of this uh, copy Etsy to slash Etsy, it'd be DX slash Etsy to slash Etsy. Mm -hmm. And call it a day. And you commit this for me? I don't have anything in there. So these this directory won't show up unless I put a file in here. Do you have a file you're going to drop in? Like a no, no. The, the co I'm going to forget that copy. How about I do this? How about I do this? <laughs> Like that, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll leave you. I'll leave you a bigger George. <laughs> yeah, that's nice boilerplate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave that exactly like that. Perfect. Project root. Yeah, I don't need that part. Just the taxi and the project group. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep the three three comments is enough. Uh oh, too many. I'll get rid of this. Nice. Geekiness. Nice. How very templatey of you. Well, you know. If you're going to ask the hey. question, someone else is. Classy, dude. It's classy. Save our future so selves. There's a fun discussion happening in the, in the sidebar about multi layers will help with build caching when developing, which is true. And Big Pod's statement is also true that build caching doesn't matter because in GitHub Actions, all the builds are done on their own separate machines. And we're not persisting cache. But on the ARM machine, we will be persisting cache. So there will be a speed up on the ARM builder because we're explicitly going to maintain cache between them just for that little bit of speed uh as the arm machine is very expensive to run so we're going to be running it on demand and turning it off when we're not using it so that will definitely help keep our run costs down 
Um, I'm going to commit this. Let's check the builds. I haven't seen them yet. I said I was going to watch yeah. them, but I didn't. Oh, no. Ooh, failed right away. <clears throat> well, no, it's six and a half minutes. But let's see. This is the DX version. What happened down here? Oh, it's specific to DX, so we know we didn't break a thing. Yeah, so down here we see that we've got the from as Bluefin DX, so that was expected. Let's run some stuff, and then it failed here. Error while running RPMOS tree install code. Package not found code. Oh, uh, there's a wget to add the third party repo. Ah, well, that we're going to need that. To... And then what happened uh, here? Why did this one fail? Wait, I... Oh, it didn't fail. The main image didn't fail. It worked just fine. Yeah. So yeah, let's go back what... to VS Code. Yeah. Let's see what's going on. This would be nice where we could build locally to troubleshoot this. But, right there. Uh... Line 59. Yeah, that's, what... that's already in here. Uh, no, so that's. Where's the line for VS Code? Right here. You copied and pasted this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. There should be another run w get line like that thing to add the third party uh, repo. Are you sure it? you had run a w get line? It's it, not in your DX repo. It is not. Did you, did you have an Etsy? Maybe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You had it in Etsy. Uh, okay, let's let's do it. Let's get to it. All right, hold on one second. Let me copy your Etsy and your user because you have a lot of stuff in there, actually. Yeah, I, don't know. I do, because that's fonts. All I right, want to do me, the monospace well, let fonts. Go back, uh, let's go back to the browser just to show what I missed. There is already mm -hmm. an Etsy directory. Oh, it's the Bluefin. My bad. Wrong one. Here we go. There's an Etsy directory. There's some Etsy stuff in here. There's a user oh, directory. Oh, we need both of those. So let's, yeah. we, I don't even leave that comment anymore. We can just copy them over. Um, let me fetch this repo. Go back to VS Code. Perfect. We can implement this then. Uh, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to get clone your repo. Do you believe I had to use a copper to get Lexi on Fedora? No. It's third. No. Uh, what? No, that, doesn't, that doesn't surprise me at it's, all. It's not in the distro. Oh, you know what? I think. It's a shame. Uh, I think I just ran out of disk space. Nope, I got eight gigs left. Okay. Oh, okay. That's this is on the wrong. I had, I had the recording going to the wrong disc. Uh, we're fine. Oh, this is no. fine. Okay. This is no, this is okay. no problem. Forty-three minutes. I've only spent two gigs on it. We should be okay. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead back to Bluefin. We're gonna copy. Actually, yeah, we're gonna sync. Uh, Bluefin. DX to Etsy. Oh no, stop. ABZ, I do AVP. That's wasteful. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, it's Z the only is wasteful is on the same disc. We're not doing a... You know what? I'll do... For you, I'll do Alien vs. Predator. Yeah, because that's the only way I can remember it. I, a f <laughs> I figured that was the case. <laughs> I always know, no matter what, Alien vs. Predator will do what you want. All right, there you go. So now we've got a DX directory populated with an Etsy yum repos.d with hashy corp and VS code and a yeah. user bin you blue Nix install and a user share backgrounds fonts. But these, uh, these are the, oh, these are the same ones in the Etsy directory currently. Right. So we can blow these away. Uh, everything in user. Cause you have you blue Nix install as well, right? Yeah. But that's on the base image. I know. Yeah, we already, that's what I'm saying. All right. So we'll leave the user directory. And we'll just keep DSXE, it's ugh, DX yeah. Etsy. I'll leave this comment here, so that's fine. All right, so we'll copy the Etsy directory in, then we W get this copper, then we do this stuff again. All right, so I'm going to save and push this up. Yep. Boop, boop, boop. Fix, add, DX Etsy from. Initial commit of DX Etsy. No, I already did that one. This is a subsequent fix. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's your GitHub username? Is it? It is Castro. Castro Joe. Okay. All right. Push this up. Let's flip on over to the Chrome window and just watch the builds. All right. Anybody have any questions? AVP is what I'm going to remember that now. <laughs> Unix I've man. always used. 
half the battle, man, is just trying to remember this stuff, dude. I've always used A V Z because the Z gives you compression, but on a local machine, Z does nothing. It's just a waste of CPU cycles because you're on the same host. You're more limited to I/O than you are networking. Uh, so it's like a force of habit. But yeah, the P gives you a nice little progress output and stuff. Mm. Uh, it's a it's a good one. Kyle Rankin and I used to do talks at scale, to stupid Unix tricks is what we called it. We, we did one for Ubuntu one year, like the Ubuntu power user or something, where I talked about, I spent yeah. 15 minutes talking about Nano. Yeah. Arguing with everyone about how Van Nano is a full-featured editor. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you know what I'm really into in right, right now? Atuin, A-T-U-I-N. Open that in a tab. This is my jam right now. It was A-T-U-I-N? Yep. And then like Linux or something. Magical there you go, yeah. History. I I click the sponsor button so fast on this thing, man. I like their logo. Yeah, so it just basically um, takes your entire history, imports it in a SQLite database. <laughs> Holy uh, crap! That's a lot. Yeah, and, you just and then like reverse searching on it. Yeah, it does reverse searching per directory. You can by default. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so what I like to do is put it per directory. So like when you go into Oh, so it remembers your history in that directory? Exactly. And oh, you can turn that on by default if you prefer that, right? So if you go into a project and you go into your history, it's all the stuff you were doing earlier that day. This is the last shit for that project, oh, right? I kind of like this. Okay, yeah, okay. Normally yeah. I'm not into these kind of things, but that's yeah. and interesting. She made a freaking, um, there's a server, sync server backend. So if you wanted to sync all your machines per host searching and stuff, if you're like, oh, what was that command I ran at? on the server the other day from the jump host or whatever thing you were on. Why do you got to run a register? Oh, for default sync server. I see. Yeah, she also hosts one. Yeah. You don't have to use a sync server, server, right? What? You don't have to use a sync server, right? You don't have to use the sync? I'd rather not have my commands sent to someone's server. Oh, no, no. That's what it is. You host your own and stuff. They also just run one if you just want to use it. Do I have... Can I just run a local setup only? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, well. You can host your own server or you can use theirs. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to serve. I don't need to put a. I type enough mis command line goofs. I don't need a server for that. Uh, oh, let me watch the builds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, like, yeah, that's that's one of those things that Main never gets pushed to any, any cloud service. DX I'm just saying, if you're lazy. All right, so we are in the build image phase. It takes about six to eight minutes, so we're. Three minutes in, then another halfway through the build, so we'll let that run. I'm gonna go install this in my shell while that's running, because it looks yeah. Cool. <coughs> Atuin is cool. What's what's the other one I'm into? Zelly J, have you seen that one? It's like another screen Tmux Biobu thing. Zellige. I don't I don't know how people oh, say. I'm, it. I'll, I'll be honest. I, I'm such an old crudum. Chrome damage that. Ugh. Are you on Biobu I'm, or screen? Well, I use Biobu with the screen bindings. So it's, I mean, Biobu is no just T yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm so stuck in my ways from days of like running Rat Poison and screen, GNU screen out, right? I can't learn the new Tmux clear stuff. What well, Control B or whatever it is. Can, no way. It's not, it's wow. not happening. I'm so sorry. I am old uh, and I am stubborn. Screen and I bindings are what? Bindings. Control. Control A, control B. A. To open. Yeah, no, just Control yeah, A, yeah. C for a new one and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's, that's what Biobu. So that's what Biobu does. Uh, so, yeah, AK Dev's got to the point. Like, so Biobu, if you run it here, I'll show you all locally. Um, can I show you all locally? Let me add this terminal in. I'm add a new window quickly. We wait for this to run. Add window capture. Uh, turn. I know. AK Dave says he maps the leader key to the tilde. Huh. Oh man, that that would feel that's, good. That's intense. I yeah. I mean, that, look more that power. Would feel I, good. I have nothing against any of the. All that stuff sounds sweet. Oh, I'm just. I'm a, I am a. I'm a luddite. Uh, don't don't worry about being a luddite. I'm such a luddite. I don't even use a terminal multiplexer. <laughs> Uh, my terminal Man, real sharing is not going to in this, but uh, yeah, that was a real Windows moment right there. It it was a hundred percent, hundred percent Garbo. 
Um, that was just garbage. But yeah, we, I don't we know. My muscle memory the, for the error. we got past the first error, by the way. Did we? So we fixed that. Yeah. Scroll up. You're already at the overwrite, so that means this is the this isn't this is for the default one. Oh no no, this is DX, image meta, Docker labels. Yeah, this is DX. Yeah. Let's take a look. Right. There. Is this the first chunk or the second chunk? This is scroll down. That, that is the first. No, it's chunk. the first chunk still. Yeah, yeah. We're still waiting. Yep, yep. Go down. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we're still waiting. Still waiting. It's getting there. Oh, because it happens twice now. Yeah. I just realized. Yeah. It's all right. But yeah, no, I I like uh, I like Biobu. Uh, it looks like the first one finished clean, which we knew was going to happen because it finished clean last time. Uh, this took five minutes thirty seven seconds. We're five minutes forty nine seconds in, which we get pretty close to the next chunk. But yeah, the 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 day I started using Biopu versus GNOME screen, and it was like the first time you launch it, if you press Control A, it prompts you. It's like, whoa, do you want screen bindings or do you want uh, Tmux bindings? And that alone, it figuring out that config file for me is the only reason I see using it today. I don't have time to figure out mm. where it sets that Tmux config. I and I just feel like a I just feel like a like a little old yeah. luddite. So you're not gonna believe who's in the Discord. Marco, Kirkland is a Biobu author. Yeah. yeah. So well, any all like Biobu or Hollywood, you can. Hollywood is another cool one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just makes gobbledygook good on your terminal to make it look all hacker movie and stuff. Didn't ha didn't he actually see that on a TV show once? Like someone actually did, used yeah, it for it its a, intended purpose. Uh, Hollywood <laughs> website has like several clips to where like people have used his Hollywood script. That's, That's awesome. A good one. Um, Make it part of the image. I will. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's go like this at Kirkland. The audience has deemed that Hollywood will be included by default in Bluefin. Oh man, I'm putting that on. I'm putting that on the website. Impress your friends. Be like, hey, I automated everything so much. There's literally nothing for me to do to my Linux computer. So we have to write tools that make it look like you're doing a bunch of stuff to your computer. Yeah. So that you can impress your friends. Well, at least it's not hackertyper.com. Yeah. <laughs> or .net, whatever it is. Hack the planet. I've seen that many times in movies. Yeah. Any nuts? Mm. Actually, who wants dibs to uh, pull request in Hollywood? I'm assuming Hollywood is in Fedora. I don't know. That's a great question. I mean, we can look. Like, we have the browser. Yeah. Can go look at the. Um... I got a toolbox. I got a Fedora toolbox. I got you. Yeah. Thank you. I was like, I could go look, and then I realized. I just go to packages out of all the time. It's such a bad, it's such an old habit. Not a bad habit, it's just an old habit. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, I don't know where to search for packages in Fedora. I'll admit, uh, Fedora packages. Type that into browser. First link. Oh, I've been here before. Oh yeah, packagesfedoraproject.org. Okay, good. I can keep my that. It's literally the same website for another distro. Oh, there's no Hollywood. <laughs> This is not the same website. This is much cleaner. The other one's got so much stuff on it. No offense to anyone who wrote the packages thing. So yeah, no Hollywood and Fedora. You got to go and... Well, I don't know why I searched... Wait a minute. Fedora. No, we don't. You can use a snap. No. We have a container file. <laughs> oh, I, I guess, yeah, you could do that by hand. Marco, you fool. We can do what we want. <laughs> Uh, we see. could actually use a snap, right? We could just it looks like it installed... squash oh, file, right? oh, it's installing code right now. Okay. So yeah, it's gotten past the error, which is good. Actually, you totally could do that. Just W get the snap, uncompress the squash FS and copy. Yeah, copy Hollywood the stuff isn't over. Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood is a. Uh... No. Stop. 
Stop. It's it's the first link. It's already there. That's a snap. I want to get to the homepage. I want to see the source code for this. I think. Oh, if you scroll down, it should, it should be there. It is, yeah. That's not going to bring me to the... Maybe it's not in GitHub. Maybe it's in... Let's see. What does he got here? Not. Oh, it's github.com slash Dustin Kirkland slash Hollywood. AK Dave got it. Thank you. My computer is slowing down, and I'm pretty sure I know why. Uh, well, let me check my disk space one more time. This might this might be coming up on the end of the stream for me. Oh, we can Sometimes. pause the recording and then just Sometimes, record somehow the disk space increased. My free disk space increased in the last ten minutes. It's weird. I'm All right, argue. I'm not gonna argue Sweet. with that. Some of that negative latency. Uh, yeah, that's the that is the link. Thank you. I'm pretty sure it's a bash script that launches a bunch of stuff. Oh, that's right. Because he just launches he doesn't Yobu, make the goggle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is a that's bash right. script that runs a bunch of stuff inside of Tmux Windows. So yeah. I suppose you could just extract this. I don't know what else is in here. If any of these other things are needed, like uh, lib, yeah. Hollywood. And this is all bash, right? I don't know what these things are. Oh yeah. Oh, he runs a bunch of bash script. That's what I remember now. So each of these lib bash scripts he runs in the tmux session. So they do all the little things like this finds all the Java and C plus plus files and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Just iterates through them using uh, pigments. And then like uh, what else is there? Logs, just tail logs, probably. Yeah. Find everything in var log that ends in dot log and tail. Yeah. Randomly open up man pages. This, yeah. It is, um, if you've never run Hollywood, I maybe I'll maybe I'll do it at the very end if I still have disk space. Uh, there's a there's a video of someone doing it. Do it. Oh yeah, you know what? We just YouTube. Maybe, oh no. Let's go to the web page. Oh no. Should we stop the recording? Move the file. No, over no, sorry. We... I, I uh, no, no. <laughs> I did something silly. Uh, I'm good. Okay. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. I locked my computer. I really need to get you a Linux machine, my man. I, I'm not. It's I'm not feeling I'm confident about there. about about your happiness right now. It's it's because it's because I'm it's because I'm recording this. Hey, look at this. Do. RPM OS tree commit on the Bluefin DX. Mm -hmm. This is gonna go green. This is gonna go green. It is. It totally, it totally is going to go all green the first time. Who said 5%? First time. Perfect. Yeah. We're just waiting on these last three DX images. And it looks like it is building NVIDIA as well, which is surprising, but good. Yep. Why, wait, why is that is surprising? surprising? I thought we disabled NVIDIA builds on here, but maybe we didn't. Oh, I, or I, I think I turned them back on. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense then, yeah. Yeah. What I can't do is... Uh, I forget what I was trying to do. I wanted to do main only on PRs, but when the merge train, when yeah, the merge queue, we do the all of them. Yeah, queue now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do all of them. Yeah, but it's fine. I mean... All right, well, you know what, thanks, gonna, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, quick... Yeah. Is there anyone actually on that? I was going to say, is anyone on the DX image to test this now? Nobody is. Well, no, we have to land it, but it's not breaking the main image. So this is going to yeah, be an yeah. additional supplementary image. Yeah. I think, George, I think I'm still need your approval just because it says you're a code owner. It should, it should go through. Yeah. Big Pot's got the right rights. All right. Not all statuses and builds have passed, so it cannot go through. Yeah. yeah, but it, I don't, it's not, these are never gonna. Is Bluefin broken? Did we merge something to Bluefin recently? No, it's, it's still, it's still going. These are never gonna, these don't run in the PR check, the build and push. Oh, interesting. No, everything's been working fine. We haven't touched anything. Well, unless it's because you were editing the uh, matrix thing and all that thing. And no.
I didn't modify that. Oh, you know what? I think I need to modify that, actually. Oh, no. Do I need to modify that? Well, either way, I disable and force the merge because we know it works. Rocket didn't explode, but it also didn't leave the pad. That's a... Man, oh, no, that's no, a great build, line. The build and release <laughs> is fine. It's build and push image, yeah. Yeah, T9 Clint rolled a natural 20 tonight. Technically, it didn't go through, though, because we broke this part, but... Well, hold on. It's not, it's not, may not be broken yet. Yeah, see, it doesn't. It's because we added the the new Matrix flavor in here, the Bluefin DX. Mm -hmm. It's not called main anymore. It's called Bluefin. So the the name, yep. the job changed. Yeah, yeah. And this is gonna doom us later, I think, because I think the ISO generator depends on something with a dash main on it. No, it won't for Bluefin because Bluefin doesn't have a dash main image. Yeah, I know. I think that might bite me later on. Oh, well, we'll have to find that out. I'm going to have to change this yeah. in here. Uh, branches. I'll peek behind the curtains. Yeah, yeah. I go into this thing all the time. Yeah, so we require build and push image for main NVIDIA, but now yeah. this is going to be... This is now... We just have to redo these, so X them all out and then research. That's what I would do. Yeah. Build and push image main bluefin wait did that get added yeah it did okay let me get rid of these boop, boop yeah get rid boop. of the ones i'm not gonna i don't understand why this is in a uh checkbox thing i know it's it's difficult and then this is nvidia bluefin yep. 38 and 37. Do you also want to require DX? Uh, at least at first. Yeah, all right. And it has to be both because Brian is on NVIDIA. Yeah, I got it. And then Big Pot, if this makes your diff smaller, then cool. Okay. What we did here is took Big Pod's idea and basically productize it, right? Yeah. One second. I'm going to turn my VS code back on while I do yeah. my little verify. I know the likelihood of intercepting an SNS code is low, but I just figured out play it safe. I turned on uh, I turned on the thing where it makes me biometric and uh, it's still the two-digit code. It's just native to the GitHub app on my phone. Yeah, I use that as well. Yeah, that thing is the bomb. I should go turn that on. I don't have that enabled yet. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to summary. For this, I PR. approved a review. I was like yeah, doing so, stuff oh, to with my the kid. Merge. That fixed it. We're still good. Nothing's broken yet. Now we have to wait the whole time though. Oh, we gotta I, the merge I want queue. people to see okay. the merge queue though. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. So here's the merge queue for Maine. It says Actually, seven I... minutes, but it's probably gonna be more like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, go to pull requests and approve a few so we get things in the merge queue because I want people to see that. Well, I, Do the just files one. I got to actually just, review it. I don't just rubber stamp your stuff, George. Well, well yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. How big is this change? Four lines? It's going to take a while. This is actually something cool Herm did. We do includes now on the just files so everybody can... We can aren't put in, just aren't update. includes experimental still in just? yes so we, asked, we we aliased it <laughs> oh i had trouble with that so i don't know it's fine they were broken anyway so where'd you alias it in the base image yeah, yeah. in config actually that's where just files start But they were broken, so if you have any better ideas, they actually work now. Uh, all right. Oh, you don't have the. It's not gonna work because we just changed. Oh, because we just changed it. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta have to rebase to get the new checks. Oh well, so much for that. How do, how would? I'll rebase it for you. But you should. Uh, you're oh, gonna. Okay. Merge in the main branch. Anyway, just show the merge queue, I guess. 
and then click on the uh, click on the yellow the yellow mm -hmm. circle there. Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. And then you can all these this is where you see all your business. Yeah. All right. Well, that that's... should be it then. Yeah, I want to get this up. We can show it. Uh... Well, let's go to that. We can also go to the repo page, the packages page. We should see at the end of this, we'll have a Bluefin DX and Bluefix, Bluefin DX yeah. video. Click packages there. Stuff, yeah. yeah. And that Ubuntu toolbox is where I keep my declarative config for my toolbox. But my entire life is out of this one repo. When I create a new distro box, it always has what I want on it. It's a pretty cool setup. Pretty cool technological terror you've constructed. I blame this on you. You know what the funny part is? Hmm. When you get that arm machine online, all of these numbers just double. We just double all yeah, of our uh, No, our because I think right? we're going to do it where there's going to be just one GitHub line for the arm builds, and we'll do the parallelization later on. Just to avoid the freaking sprawl of, uh, I guess we probably will have to do multiples if we want to report the logs back to GitHub. Shoot, I didn't think of that. That's another problem for another day. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe a Monday we'll do a Monday stream of uh, faffing around with the ARM server. Close as he's to finishing, almost done. Hope. I uh, know, I know. You can kill the recording now, though. Yeah, I'll stop. I'll, wow, well, I'll, I'll stop here, and then I'll start it again when we get to the end, just to show the packages are up because we're about an hour in the recording. Oh, okay. All right. So check the merge queue. Looks like merge is merged, and if we go to the packages page and refresh, we've got a Bluefin DX and Bluefin DX NVIDIA image. And I booted into the image, and everything's there. Lexi, Vert Manager, VS Code. It's all layered now. Nice. But it has like the tags as well, so you can, you can grab 37 yeah. or 38 or latest. Oh, you made latest. a 37. Yeah, we could probably pull the yeah. We have 37 and 38 in the build matrix for Bluefin. We Let's leave it there. Leave probably it there. pull that out in the future. I mean, well, 37 will disappear. It, it took nothing to add it to, to have it there. But, yeah. Yeah, so what's going to happen is when 39 comes out, 37 will be there. But then we'll be yeah. three and only at a time. Yeah. Right. So when 30, well, 40 comes out, 37 goes away. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So that's it. Good to go. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, try the image. And I'm going to go ahead and add some more goodies. Yeah. Cheers. Shout out again to Big Pod for helping us realize that we can do the multi stage builds because this really makes the container file for Bluefin tight and it makes it easy for people to add additional contextual flavors to their custom base images by just doing this little bit like if we look at the pr all in all it's a pretty small it was a pretty small change set you know i uh i you thought it was like 52 lines of code yeah it's one of those things where it's it small but it makes like a big change and in oh, my brain yeah. i was like man we're gonna have to rewrite half this thing you know like i didn't know no, it was pretty easy to extend the current GitHub workflow file. We changed a handful of lines. Uh, and then the rest of the lines come from the 29 lines from the container file. And then we added eight lines to the build file. And that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. All right. All right, man. You all See you later. One? I appreciate your help, brother. See you.